With Sonic Frontiers coming out in just five days, my hype is really starting to get up there. And because this game actually looks fun and new based off that first trailer, I've been avoiding pretty much everything about it since. What can I say, I love surprises, and if I know what's gonna happen, that kinda ruins the fun of it all. Twitter and YouTube really like trying their best to break that trend for me, but thankfully I've gotten pretty lucky avoiding spoilers for Frontiers. So far. So with all that said, it isn't hard to figure out that I've really been starving for some new 3D Sonic content. But I've played them all now, and I don't want to just go back and play Generations again. And thankfully, I don't have to, because we have level mods. Sonic Generations being on PC since its launch in 2011, Jesus, has made it possible for lots of custom levels to be made over the years. And today, I thought I'd play some, share them all with you, and definitely not get sidetracked whatsoever. Let's go! First up, we have Shivery Mountainside. Or Mountainside, sorry, there was a bug on my screen. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. First, I should mention that this mod has a really neat 3D hub world in the form of a cozy cabin. Something that's totally not required for a level mod. In fact, it's really impressive it's even here. Most of the ones I play today don't have them at all. But it goes a long way to making the whole experience feel more unique. It's like I'm not just playing Sonic Generations again, this is a whole different game. Oh hey, I love Sonic Generations. The Eggpawns also have been given a new Frozen Overlook to match with the decor too. There's a lot of cool little things like that here. Like even the grind rails have little snowy symbols on them. None of these things are essential, I just think they're neat. So yeah, as you could have probably guessed, this level's main theme is that it takes place on a snowy mountain. But it is so much more than that. You have your snowboarding down the cliffside, the running through the mountain towns, the platforming and grinding over the icy waters. Then the level goes even deeper and you get these crystalline caves to explore. There's so much here, it's genuinely incredible. A problem I have with some generation stages and a lot of forces stages is that they feel sort of isolated. Like there's one main setting and that's all you're really going to be seeing throughout the stage. Even when Generations does change the decor, it doesn't feel very fleshed out. Like, like, it happens for a second, it's cool, but then it's over. When the environment changes, I want to feel like I'm a part of it. This is something I love about Unleashed stages, because it feels like you're traveling such a huge distance, with every landmark being properly expanded on. And this level nails that feeling perfectly for me. Oh hey, there's a dash ring on that tree. Let's see if I could just turn the camera and find a way up there. Oh yeah, that's right. Generations doesn't have any camera controls. At all! This is something that doesn't really matter, but, but it is weird, right? If I wanted to turn around and go back and unleash, I could just turn the camera and do it. Here I gotta find space to drift and just hope the camera turns around enough. And good luck trying to turn it at all in forces. This is something I'm really expecting Frontiers to have in its boost levels, considering it's a mostly open world game. But knowing this series, I can't really expect anything, can I? Anyway, it turned out to get up there, I had to use this slope to reach a zipline. And this is a technique this level actually utilizes a lot. Like here, you'd think using this dash ramp would put you right into the ring, but no, it sends you back to the bottom path. You're actually supposed to use this little incline to gain enough momentum to jump into it yourself. I love this kind of level design, because it requires you to be genuinely aware of your surroundings. It was so fun that I started doing it in the other level mods without even realizing. This is the type of level design Sonic needs more of, and it's something we haven't really seen since like Adventure, Adventure 2 maybe, I don't remember. This level does ask a bit much of the player sometimes though. I for one love the challenge, but it should be secluded to parts that have some type of failsafe. Like here, if you take this path and boost wrong, you're just dead, simple as that. And you know, maybe I just suck at the air boost, but I swear I was doing it at the same time and it only sometimes worked. But maybe that's just me, I don't know. Getting back to positives, this level has like no invisible walls. Like here, I accidentally took the wrong path and missed a red ring. Instead of locking me into this new area, it let me have free range to go back. It didn't go too well, but a lot of other Sonic games would never let you do that at all, so it's definitely appreciated. Speaking of those red rings though, they're extremely well hidden, and had me looking all over just to find the things. This is in no ways a problem though, because I really enjoyed discovering every new bit I could. This level genuinely made just walking around exploring fun, and that's a feeling I haven't felt since Adventure. And considering Frontiers is an open world game, I really hope that feeling continues over. There's also this bit here, where to get to this rail shortcut above, you actually have to backtrack and hit the spring. I never thought going backwards would be useful towards going fast in Sonic, but here we are. Plainly put, this is an immensely fun level to learn and speedrun. There's so many fast little shortcuts here, and there's also no waiting at all. If you're good enough, you can go fast the entire time. And even if you're not, it's still fun to play normally, and that's what makes a Sonic level good, when it can appeal to both playing casually and speedrunning. I always hear the argument, usually with this series in particular, which is, oh, if you learn it, it's not that bad. But why can't it just be fun in the first place? Why should I be expected to learn a game that I'm not enjoying to begin with? Just because it has a well-known character attached to it? Learning it should be the cherry on top, not the entire Sonic cake. And when you've got me analyzing the core essence of what makes Sonic Sonic, that's when you've got a damn good level. 
If you want to have a fun, simple time, you're covered. If you want to explore, you're covered. If you want to find new ways to go as fast as possible, you're covered. This one really does have it all. Oh yeah, it's also worth mentioning that this level is entirely 3D. Not that 2D is a bad thing. I mean, I, I like Sonic Colors. You're right there, Sonic? Next up is Frozen Hill, another snowy type stage. And yeah, this one's aesthetics are nothing compared to the last one. It goes for more of a generic ice theme, which looks fine. It's just kind of bland. It especially sucks because the custom hub this mod comes with shows this cool sort of robot whale thing over here. But it only shows up in the actual stage for like a few seconds as some background elements. What gives? I don't want to give the impression this level sucks or anything though, quite the opposite, this one is also a lot of fun. It definitely takes after generations more than it does anything else, so if you're into that game stage design, this is right up your alley. The emphasis on 2D really shows here, and yeah, it's pretty alright. I never was too big on the 2D sections of generations, especially considering classic Sonic existed in the same game, but at least they still feel like they're part of the stage and have some dynamic camera angles. This level's pretty good about that kind of thing, where it gives you enough time to see what's coming up ahead. This is a feature that's completely absent from Forces though, I don't think it ever happens, which is just strange. It made Forces levels feel all the more flat, and they really could have used the distraction from that aspect. I hope that Frontiers has a lot more of a cinematic side to it, considering I've been told it's a bigger budget game and whatnot. Oh hey, can I go into the background here? Oh, uh, no. Am I just stupid? I, I swear it looks like you could go back there. Other than that though, this stage definitely does open up when you explore it more. This part here that looks like it's part of the background, you could actually run on it and take another route. That's straight up like the beginning of Chemical Plant, and I love that kind of thing. Though, it doesn't really have the same sense of exploration to it. It's hard to describe, but you don't get the same environmental feedback that you do in snowy mountainsides. There, it feels like you're exploring an entirely different area within the same world, while here, it's more like you're discovering different lanes on a racetrack. They're definitely faster, but mostly provide the same experience that you would have had taking the normal route. Both have their merits, don't get me wrong, but I vastly prefer how Snowy Mountainsides does it. I, I swear, I do, I do like this one. Like, like here, look, there's a bit you can do an angle jump, just like in the last level. Or not. Yeah, Sonic really likes to stick to the slope while boosting, I don't know why. It wasn't a problem before, so it's strange it happens here. Alright, let, let's just try this again, stay positive. I went so fast the game crashed. Alright, whatever, let's just get back in the horse and- Oh, god damn it! Oh. Frozen Hill. After all I've said. I'm sorry. Crashed Cove Zone is up next, and this one is weird. You've just got strange things here, like these untextured signposts, or the weirdly fabricated trees and shiny grass. There's also strange pieces from other games, like Eggman's Battleship from 06 just sunk here in the water, or these roads from Sonic Adventure. There's also a bunch of these fish ship things that I swear are from another Sonic game too, I, I just don't know which. These assets give the whole level a sort of fever dream feeling. Like, it's something you play in a dream and then barely remember the next day. And I kinda love it for that. I know that Frontiers is using levels from older games again, like Green Hill, but honestly, if you're gonna reuse stuff, this is how you should do it. Make something that feels weirdly familiar, despite not being that at all. Like, nothing about this one is really conventional. There's a bunch of rocks here that you could smash, but there's no reason for them. None of them give you anything, they're just here. There's also these logs that I know were specifically made for this level, but they're never used. You could run through this one in the beginning if you want, but that's it, never again. The whole thing has an otherworldly feeling to it, like it was constructed by some sort of alien race that also likes Sonic. Like there's this whole bit down here if you fall, but you never would, so why? There's this other part too that has so many different pathways, but you'll most likely never see it because most of the routes send you away that completely skips the section. It's so weird. And that's what makes it likable. Alright, Airship Heights. After that last level, I'm ready to get back to normalcy. Let's go. Oh no. Yeah, this one isn't exactly finished. But look, they changed the boost in the time icon, so uh, that's neat. Okay, this one's pretty easy picking, so I'm gonna try to focus on more of the positives, because there generally are a good amount. This stage is super jank, but it was still sort of fun to learn and speedrun. There's a few shortcuts here that required a good amount of skill, and while some might have been unintentional, they're still fun regardless. And even though they're totally pointless, there's a bunch of moments where exploring gains you 10 rings, which is kinda neat and rewards you for looking around. This level honestly reminds me of Mario Maker in a lot of ways. It's clear that just some kid put together a level and didn't think much about it, but there's a sort of wholesomeness to that, you know? The Hooded 2002, if you're still out there, I'm rooting for you. Like, it's just fun to see what this type of creation can offer, and it makes me want to see a true Sonic Maker type game too. I know that there is a 2D one currently being made by fans, but I more mean a true 3D experience. It's so much wider of a genre, and I think people can be a lot more creative with it. 
I mean, going by the level mods we've already played, I'm definitely not wrong with that. I really do hope Sonic Frontiers is more accessible to create level mods for than Generations is, but I guess only time will tell. Anyway, uh, this one doesn't have a goal ring, so really the only time limit is your imagination. And boredom. You ever notice how the time icon still has a second hand? Oh hey, I love Sonic Colors! So yeah, this is Tropical Resort, and it's basically just how you remember it. This one is a totally original 3D hub world too. You can't see it, but it's there, I promise. This one is pretty impressive to me because of how well it's been ported over from Colors. Like in some places, this genuinely could have been shown as Colors Ultimate, and I don't think people would have noticed. Surely better than whatever we ended up getting anyway. The differences start to come up when realizing this game's only wisp is Rocket, so the level design had to be altered a bit. Like in the first act, you're able to use the drill wisp to go underground and find a red ring, but you of course can't do that here. So you actually have to backtrack through this point, which you exit through in the original game. And this is super creative. You have to use your knowledge of the original stage and work around these new limitations. And I like that. It adds a new element to this already great stage, and this really does show color strengths at full force. This may be a mostly 2D game, but there's so much to explore and discover in these levels. Getting the red rings takes genuine effort, and they're actually hidden in cool places you have to go out of your way to find. In newer games like Forces, they're usually just placed on the lower routes, which you only get to if you're performing poorly. Why? These should be rewards for interacting with the environment in new ways, not just playing the level normally. This is where Colors excels to me, it's all about discovery, and that's why the 2D is fun. And finding the red rings again here really made me realize that. I like Colors, dang it, I don't care who hears me. Though, once we get to the more custom stages, the flaws of this mod really start to show. So, in the original version of Act 4, the level ends here at around the 40 second mark, and only becomes more interesting once you have the wisp powers to interact with the elements underground. Unlike before, the mod creator decided to force this part in the level by moving the goal ring and creating a direct path to the underground area. This isn't an inherently bad idea, the problem is that what's here is very… not fun. There's a lot of boring flipping switches and just really confined level design that consists of walking back and forth. There's not much fun to be had here unfortunately, and this type of level design is exactly what I hope Frontiers isn't. This isn't Sonic, this is just dull, and the problem doesn't get much better either. The red ring thing I mentioned earlier is also completely forgotten here too. Like in this level, a lot of the red rings are super mindless, either requiring me to take a lower worse path or destroying some obvious boxes. Then you have Act 6, which is where all the problems are at their worst. Originally, the stage revolved around the gimmick of these rotating platforms, which admittedly wasn't very exciting to begin with. This level made it so much worse though. There's flipping switches, random troll moments, this red ring that just doesn't work at all, it's such a nightmare. This also really makes me miss the double jump from colors. Like this bit here, in the original you could just do a few double jumps and bam, you're done. Now you actually have to wait for the platforms to move and everything feels so precarious. And because of this, the red ring earlier in the stage took me way longer than it should have. The generation's moveset just isn't tailored for this kind of level design, and even when it's not just a porting problem, I'm still missing it. Cause here I fell and this ledge is just barely out of reach. So what do I have to do? Go all the way back and get the rocket wisp. But how fun! This is a fun level mod, and I really like its interpretation of the first three acts. But after that, just give this one a skip, it's not worth it. Oh hey, I love Sonic Force! <laughs> So yeah, this is a port of Sunset Heights, and the mod's main goal was to emulate the advanced lighting techniques of the engine used in Forces. And yeah, this level looks great, there's no doubt about that. I don't know much about the original Hedgehog engine, but I'm sure pulling this off took a lot of work, and that's definitely appreciated. This honestly made me appreciate Forces' art direction a lot more too. I do feel like the game is a bit too dulled with its color choices, but in general, this is a really aesthetically pleasing game. And with all that said, man, if Frontiers has this level design, I'm gonna cry. It's so basic and lifeless, it just leaves me wondering why. Why is it like this? Like there's this part here that has lane switching, but gives you no reason to do it. There's no obstacles, only rings, all of which get drawn into you anyway. You have no reason not to just hold boost here. And remember what I said about the colors double jump actually changing that game? Well, not here. All the platforming is so mindless, I forgot Forces even had a double jump before I went back and played it for this video. I will say, this level is made a lot more fun through Sonic's Generations controls, but that really says a lot about Forces. With Colors, both control schemes have their strengths, but here, no, Generations are just better. There was this bit here where you could use the slope to access a higher route, and this really impressed me for a second because I had no idea it was in Forces. And it turned out I was right, it wasn't. It doesn't even let you jump here, god. It's strange because the creator said they didn't change any level design, so I don't know what's up with this part. Maybe they couldn't help themselves? And man, what happened to the ranking system? Back in Unleashed and Colors, you actually had to explore and interact with the levels to get an S rank, but here in Generations and Forces, it only cares about how fast you go. A lot of people like to call Forces Colors 2 because of its emphasis on a 2D and a more limited control scheme, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. 
Colors as levels seem simple on the outside, but then when you dig deeper, it turns out they're actually super complex. There's so much to experience here, and it's what makes Colors a great game. When you get that S rank, you've earned it. Forces levels also seem simple on the outside, and then R. Here's your S rank. There's nothing to keep you coming back here because it's all so simplistic. There might be an alternate route here and there, but in general, this game is just about as basic as it gets. Generations might only factor speed into its rankings as well, but at least that game has a good amount of depth. Here it's just nothing, man. And that's the worst feeling a game can give me. Anyway, uh, yeah, cool level mod, whatever, I don't know. Our next level is Quartz Cryolite, and this one blends in with the original hub world, which is pretty neat. Oh yeah, the reason it's totally uncolored like that is because when launching this mod, I clicked New Game, which uh, little did I know would completely erase my actual save file, which meant I had to replay through the entirety of Generations all over again. The thing that I do for love. Anyway, the theme to this stage is that you're infiltrating Eggman's mines. It starts out with this more icy, cavernous part, being pretty unthreatening and more somber, but then later on, the tone completely changes as the train becomes scorched with lava in this tungsten-type material. And I love how the music changes as the level theme does. This one doesn't have it all in the looks department though, like there are some sections that make me think I installed the mod wrong. Like the background just looks weird here, doesn't it? Like it's using the wrong texture or something? Uh, is it just me? Though this mod does change the look of enemies, which is cool, giving them either an icy or fiery look depending on where in the stage you are. Though unfortunately a lot of the level design is kind of boost heavy. Like there's definitely cool spectacle here, but the only player input is boosting, which after a whole game of doing that in forces is not what I want right now. There's a couple bits in this level where you go through these tubular, like, tunnels too, which originally I really didn't vibe with. It was just way too easy to lose control and fall off the roof. That is, until I started drifting, which totally changed the game. This is genuinely a really exhilarating use of the drift, having to keep swerving side to side to keep the speed up. It's the sort of idea I haven't really seen in the other boost games, and I hope Frontiers really tries to give us some more fun drifting moments like this. Unlike Forces, which just completely removed it. Wait, Fr Frontiers is gonna have the drift, right? Right? There's also a surprising amount of completely different pathways here. In all the other levels I've played today, most of the alternate paths don't last for too long or still have the same basic look as the adjoining areas. Not here though, depending on which way you go, you're going to be seeing something completely different. Like here, you could either stay on the wood section for this arrow chaser quick step bit, or you could take on Eggman's ships head on. And I'm not going to be one to say Frontiers need this kind of thing, because it's a bit ridiculous to expect a whole new experience based on a path you take, but this is definitely neat. Look, here's a smiley face. GameCube Galaxy. This one also has a place in the hub, this time featuring color. Well, except Vector. <laughs> this level's theme is, a uh, GameCubes, yeah. They're everywhere, from the backgrounds, to the objects, to the mostly blue and purple terrain, to the enemies that have GameCube logos just shoved through their bodies. This level has fun with its looks, that's for sure. But this is a mostly 2D affair, though. There's these sections of 3D near the end, but each one just sent me straight to my death. Some type of GameCube-themed arrow would have been really nice here. The 2D stuff is fun enough, some good secrets and whatnot. Just the 3D is so flat. Like, the tubes are back from the quartz level, but there's nothing in them. No enemies, no saw blades, no rings, nothing. The whole level is just a bit too basic. Leaves me not much to talk about. I'm not a cube, turn it off. Next up is Spiral Reef. And this one's concept is pretty neat. Basically, you're going around this tower, but every lap you take changes up the level design just a little bit, and all these changes slowly start to add up and get decently overwhelming. It sort of reminds me of one of those bonus stages that Forces would have, except this concept is actually interesting. I'm guessing Frontiers is going to have some of these extra type levels too, so I really hope they're a lot more fun and engaging than what was provided in Forces. Like seriously, who could forget such classics like Flying Pod or Fire Cannon 2? I don't want this video to seem like I hate Forces, because I don't, but it is genuinely so damn bland. And that's the worst kind of thing a game can be to me. Sonic Forces is good. For a mobile game. And I refuse to elaborate on that. And now for the grand finale, as it were, we have Final Rush, based off my favorite level from Adventure 2. This one is totally different though, as the original and more focused on rail grinding, while well, this one is more about platforming. I'm definitely okay with this change though, Generations rail grinding is way too dull for it to be fun like it was in Adventure 2. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't great there, but I do miss how you could lean and do tricks off the end of rails. They also preserved your momentum when jumping off them, while usually in Sonic games now you just get launched by a spring. This level was really supported by those attributes, while now rails kind of just exist for more reaction-based level design. I'm fine with the change, but I would like to see them try out this old rail system again in another game. Though I know Frontiers won't be the one. Even though it's not much like the original, this is a super fun one to close this video out. The theme is acclimated extremely well into the level design, with Sonic going in and out of space all the time. There's a good amount of shortcuts and alternate paths too. This one is just really solid. 
I honestly kind of like this one a bit more than the actual representation we got for Adventure 2. It just makes me wish Generation of Stage themes were a bit more diverse, really. Like, come on, Asteroid Coaster totally should have been used instead of Planet Wisp. We all know it. It was the last level and everything, come on. There's also a surprising amount of cinematics to this spot as well. Like here, Sonic does a cool pose to the camera, and it's like, wow, this could be real. Sometimes he gets a little confused, but he's trying his best. This was a really fun one, and a fun collection of mods altogether. Some of them weren't the best, but just seeing fan content like this always makes me happy. Whether or not Frontiers will live up to all my insane expectations doesn't matter, because I know I'll always have fan-made content like this to fall back on, and that within itself is amazing. And with all that said, and Frontiers right over the horizon, I just have to say, if you're not better than forces, I will burn sight to the ground. I'm not kidding, I'll actually do it. I fire. <laughs>